Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you are well. In today's video, I wanted to show you how to create another style of a rope table swab. This one is simple to do and it also allows you to use up any shorter scrap pieces of rope that you have available. Here you can see the style of a table swab that we're going to be making today. Like all table swabs, it is used to clear your table, your workbench or any other surfaces. This one is very simple to do and usually I use up scrap pieces of rope to do it. Still, it is very functional and also quite decorative. For many of you, a short description of the making process is going to be enough. Still, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the entire making process. So if I describe the techniques used, basically you start off with a ring. It can be a grommet, or a metal ring. You pass a number of pieces of rope through it, you tie them together here, and you cover the tied section using a decorative knot. Finally, you unravel your pieces of rope, and you have a nice looking and functional table swab. For the supplies, the first thing that you're going to need is going to be a ring. You can make a ring yourself out of a rope, or you can use an existing metal ring if you have one around. I'm going to show you how to create a rope ring later on in the video. The next supply that you're going to need are going to be short pieces of rope which we're going to use to create the working part of the swab. Usually for this purpose, I use up scrap pieces of rope. I would recommend a length a bit under a foot for this purpose. So maybe 10 inches, maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more, depending on how long you want your swab to be. Next, I'm going to be using some thread in order to bind the short pieces of rope together. And finally, as far as the main supplies go, you're going to need some cordage, which is going to cover the section which you're going to bind with your thread. For this purpose, I usually use some decorative cord, but you can also use marline, you can use twine, whatever you have. The better the cord that you use, the better the decorative effect is going to be. And finally, you're going to need something to cut your rope with. With these supplies ready, we can begin our project. We're going to begin by creating a rope ring. To do this, I'm going to make a rope grommet. I'm going to take a piece of rope, that is three times the circumference of the ring that I want. So three times the circumference plus let's say half a foot extra. I'm going to unravel my rope so that I get a strand out of it. Thank you. 
So I now have a single strand of my rope. After unraveling your rope, you're going to take one of the strands, fold it in half, and cross it into a ring. So this is a loop that I'm going to use to create a ring. I'm going to take my right strand, gently twist it away from me, and place it around my loop. Then I'm going to repeat, twist away from me, and wrap it around, and twist away from me, and wrap it around and twist, and wrap, and twist, and wrap, and twist, and wrap. At some point, your two ends are going to meet up. Take the other end, which you have not used up to this point, so the left one, Twist it away from you and wrap it around, around every second strand. So, I started here, I'm going to skip past two strands and come up. And again, twist away from me. Go past two strands and place my strand. And again, slightly twist and travel in the third spot. So here I'm going to go past two. So I twist away from me and I always travel past two strands. If you did this correctly, you're going to end up with a fairly nice looking ring. Your two ends are going to meet up again. What I'm going to do now is cross them like this and tie a half knot. So I take this bottom strand, pass it through and tighten up. Like this. And usually this is enough. For added security, you can splice the two ends a bit further into your ring. To do this, you take one of the ends you pass over one of the strands and under one. And you take the other strand, and again, you pass over one of the strands in the ring, and then under the next. Like this. Now you can cut your two ends. And we now have a strong rope ring. I'm now going to continue by taking short lengths of rope and feeding them through the ring. I'm going to fold them in half so that each 
Strand is going to give me two ends. Usually I place my strands around the part where I spliced my ring together. This way I hide the joint section a bit further. After gathering up a bunch of strands, like this, I'm going to need to bind my strands together. To do this, I'm going to grab a piece of thread and bind them in some way. Now commonly a constrictor knot is used, in my case, I don't complicate that much. All I do is a series of half hitches. I place a piece of thread like this. So the standing hand is facing down towards the bottom of the swap. Then I create a loop. Like this. I run my working hand around and through the loop. Like this. Then I tighten up, trying to position my first half hitch as close to the ring as possible. Then I simply repeat. I create a loop, I run around and under and through the loop. And again tighten up as close to the previous strand as possible. You're going to need to do your half hatching quite tightly to make it secure. So again, a simple loop, run around, under and through the loop, and tighten up. And I do this several times. Loop, run around, through the loop, tighten up. Now, before I finish up my binding, I'm going to make sure that my strands are spread apart evenly around the ring. So I'm going to pull a bit on the ends. So let's say something like this. Continue binding.
and do your binding as tight as you can. Finally, finish off by tying together the standing hand and the working hand. So what I do is I tie a reef knot. So one half knot and a second half knot just to secure my binding. Like this. Then I trim off the two ends. We are now ready to add in the covering knot. At this point, I'm going to show you how to cover up this binding using a decorative knot. You have a lot to choose from. For example, you can do a Spanish ring knot. Or, in my case, I'm going to be doing a three-part, four-byte Turk's head tripled. To tie my decorative knot, I'm going to take my cord and place it over my binding. I'm going to come around, traveling over the standing hand, creating an X. Come around again, pick up your working hand, so this one, and pass under the standing hand, like this. Then, using the working hand again, I'm going to pass over, under. So, over, under. Like this. Now, we have three strands here. I'm going to pick up the left one, place it over the middle one, like this. Then, using my working hand, I'm going to pass over, under. So, over, under. Like this. Now all you do is you take your working hand and you place it alongside your standing hand. So I went over under and with this you have tied a single pass of your knot. I'm going to continue by chasing my standing hand using my working hand. To do this, all I do is follow my standing hand all through the knot. I'm going to do this two times. Let me show you. So I simply follow the standing hand.
Once your standing hand and working hand meet up, you have doubled up your knot. I'm going to triple it up by again following the standing hand. And with this, my knot is tripled up. One final touch that I'm going to do is to take my standing hand and to run it down here under these strands. This is just going to hide my standing hand out of sight and make it easier to cut once I have tightened up my Turk's head knot. Now to tighten it up, first pull a bit on the standing hand so that you find it. Now you begin removing slack all through the knot. Basically, you are removing slack out, constantly pulling it through the knot. You will want to position your knot over the binding before you tighten it up. Finally, you pull your slack out of the working hand, like this. Now you can trim the two ends. Try to do it as close to your decorative knot as possible. We're now going to continue by unraveling all of these strands of a rope. So this is going to take a little bit for me to get everything unraveled. Finally, once you break down the pieces of rope into thinner fibers, I'm going to trim all of the fibers to the same length.
So something like this. And there you have it, a rope table swap. One final tip. If you want to straighten out these fibers a little bit, to something like this, simply place them in hot water for a few minutes. Let them dry and they're going to straighten out. Guys, at this point we came to the end of the video. I hope that I made everything clear enough. Thank you for joining me and see ya next time.